Hello students, in this video, we will look into the preliminary details to build standard cell designs. Before we discuss about the standard cells, we will look into the definition of standard cell library first. The standard cell library is a library that contains a collection of cells like inverter cell, NAND cell, D flip flop, and sometimes IO cells and other cells like etc. It basically contains information about each cells like power consumption, input capacitance, input output delay, area, material used, and many other informations like this. As shown in this figure, a standard cell library contains two types of files. One file is the .lib file, the other file is the .lib file. We will not go into the details of each of these files in this video. We will discuss in more details in the future. Here it is used to create an awareness about what is standard cell library and in ASIC flow where they are finding its usage. As shown the .lib file or liberty timing file which contains information about the timing and area of the cell is utilized during the synthesis process and the left file or library exchange format file which contains information about the layers that are used inside the cell is used during the PAR process or Pleasant routing process. A standard cell library must contain at least the following cells to be able to implement any logic functions. They are NAND, NOR, NOT and a D flip flop. Additionally, you can even have cells like fill cell, tie high, tie low cells, IO pads and multi input gates like 4 input NAND gate, uh, even an error circuit etc. To build a standard cell, one has to understand two important parameters which are routing grid and pitch size. A pitch size is basically derived from the routing grid parameter. In general, both these parameters would define the input output pin locations in the standard cell, the height and the width of a standard cell. One has to understand what is meant by routing grid and how it helps us to design a standard cell. We will look into a quick video of the layout of the inverter schematic shown here. As shown in this schematic, we need a PMOS transistor whose body terminal is connected to the VDD and we also need an NMOS whose body is connected to our ground. In general, a CMOS logic can be fabricated using three fabrication processes. One is n -well process, two p -well process and the third is a twin tip process. So these are more general processes. The PDK that we use in our lab only supports this n -well process. The following animation video assumes that you have the knowledge about these processes and how the NMOS and PMOS transistors are formed in the n -well process. The video is not intended for a detailed explanation of how to perform inverter layout using NWELL as you would have studied in your UG courses well before. So it's intended for our understanding about routing grid. Consider the dark gray color block as our P substrate. Through masking, one can implement the NWELL inside the P substrate where we built our P transistors and this NWELL would act as a body for PMOS transistors. Now the PMOS and the NMOS transistors are created using NWELL process technique. Note that the oxides are created between gate and channel as well as the surrounding drain and source terminals creating electrical isolation from other contacts as shown in transparent blue color. The poly is used to connect the gates of both the transistors. The small bluish cubes is shown as a wire to connect the source drain diffusions to the top metal layers through the thick oxide layer. Also note that there is a wire for poly as well. Now the electrical interconnections are realized using metal layers running on top of the oxide. Note 
that the widths of VDD and VSS are made wider than the other interconnect wires to facilitate more current across the standard cells from this common VDD VSS wires. Also note that there is a poly to metal one wire poking from poly input layer layer. Now a layer of oxide closes our standard cell and note that there is etching done on this top metal oxide where the IO signals from this standard cell can be connected to the top metal layers to have communication to other cells. These etchings has to happen only at certain locations such that the tool which does this part process namely encounter in cadence would do this routing with ease. Now to understand this phenomenon clearly I would show how these cells are placed during the power process with just, with just three standard cells placed side by side. The cells are arranged beside other cells and these cells can communicate among each other through the top metal layers that is provided by your PDK. During the power process, the top metal layers are arranged either in VHV or HVH routing format, meaning that if the immediate metal layer apart from the metal that is used inside the standard cell is metal 2 and if we have chosen the HVH routing format then this metal 2 will be placed horizontally and since metal 3 which is the next immediate metal 2 metal 2 will be laid vertically with respect to standard cell. This in turn forms a grid over all the standard cells. Two. Now, let us visualize the routing grid from the top view. Note that M2 is shown in red color and M3 is shown in dark green color with thick oxide isolating these two metals. This arrangement that is used during the placement process is known as routing grid. As shown, as you could note that the standard cell pins are located exactly at the interconnect point between metal 2 and metal 3 and this makes easier for the placement routing tool to route the signals to other standard cells.